So thank you for coming out this afternoon. And uh, we're going to talk about story planning for the next 60 minutes. And um, I'm very excited about this topic because it's something that I is my passion, actually. And it, it really is about strategic storytelling. And I'm assuming that, you know, all of you in the room on some level or another uh, create content for your visitors. And that um, your hope is with your content that it connects with your visitors and your stories engage them. Um, but absolutely, I know for uh, a certainty that how well a visitor experiences your story really depends almost entirely upon how well it's planned. And so we are, you know, every day when we tell stories to one another, if your partner or daughter or son or friend says, you know, how was your day? Almost instantly, you know, our brains start to construct a story in terms of our answer. And this is really how we create meaning in our lives. But um, it's a different ballgame with digital content marketing and digital storytelling. And I just want to ask everybody in the room right now, this is, um, you know, a diagram of uh, are, you know, you think of your core story and where you're telling it and all the different channels that you're using right now. Um, Nora's going to put up a little poll and I want you to just write or answer um, how many channels you're actually using and where you're publishing content. So if you could maybe put that up, Nora, and we can have a look at where we're sitting. If you're in the one to three channels or places you're publishing content, or if you're in the three to five, or if you're in the five to 10, okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah, so, wow. Many of you are even falling in the three plus category. That's amazing. Just so share our results here. Now everybody's answered. So great. Share this on the screen. Can everyone see that? Hopefully. Yeah. And um, so look at that. So, so one to three, uh, 13 percent of you, three to five, 60 percent of you. Holy mackerel. You're busy people and five to 10. Wow. 27 percent of you. So, you know, we are all doing cross-platform storytelling, which is complex. And um, the fact is, if you want to do it well, and some of you might already have systems in place, uh, you need a system because good stories don't happen by chance. Uh, and I want to talk about three different kind of ways or applications that we can think about organizing our content and our storytelling today. And the first one is, of course, a content strategy. So a content strategy, you know, if we think of it's kind of like the architectural plans uh, for your building, if I, if you would let me use an analogy, um, which I'll be returning to actually throughout this presentation, because it is, it is about building this kind of foundation, right? And a content strategy, this to me is one of the best descriptions of what it is. Um, a content strategy is the high level vision that guides future content development to deliver against a specific business objective. That's it. Content strategies shouldn't actually be that long. Um, and they should be absolutely integrated with your business plan and your business strategy. So it's this high level um, vision. The second part of your content planning bucket, if you will, is a content plan. And this is the building if you will. And a content plan is different from a content strategy. It is the operational aspect of your content strategy, okay? So it's got things like workflows and processes. It's got the who, what, when, and where, figuring that out about your content. Um, it's really looking at how your stories align with your audience development goals, right? That is that is a huge part of the planning piece, right? So it's getting a little bit more into the weeds. And the third piece of content planning and management uh, is the actual 
day to day. So it's the elevator in your building, if you will. It's the execution of the content plan. So it's kind of a waterfall, right? It's like the strategy is a big vision, then the plan, then the execution. And this is really where the creating of content and the curating of content happens. It's all your editorial activities. It's your measuring of, you know, are things working? Did that thing in the plan and the strategy actually work for that particular audience or mm, did we kind of miss the mark? Uh, it's the interacting with visitors, right? Responding, noticing comments, liking, all of that piece. And so this part of your content world, your content strategy is really the tactical and it really happens kind of at the channel level. And you might be thinking, well, I'm just a small business. I don't know, it sounds a little bit complicated, but trust me that um, if you think, how does this benefit me to know the differences and to have these things in place? Well, the biggest thing um, that I hear from operators that I talk to every day is that content stressful. Um, I'm sure we all have been in that place of last minute content creation. You want to try and avoid that as much as you can. I'm sure right now all of you are starting to think about high season and there's a lot for you to do, especially after the past two years. So the other piece that these are strategy and a plan help with is improving your business operations and your capacity and your performance. So it has a bottom line repercussion. Absolutely. Um, it builds a, a more resilient company as well. You are a more resilient organization when you, you work together, um, no matter your size, to create uh, a strategic, well thought out plan for, for your storytelling. And then the, the best part that I see the benefits of this kind of work is that it creates a healthy and organized what I call story world, because each of us, whether we're a destination or operator, we're kind of working within this story world and you want it to be one that visitors enjoy being in and that they want to share and tell their friends about it, right? Um, so I'm gonna shift gears for a minute. And some of you who might've been in my destination story before know that I, I love this man. He is Carolus Linnaeus, and he is, um, some of you might know him from science class. He's the father of taxonomy, and he was a Swedish botanical taxonomist who was the first person to formulate and adhere to a uniform system for defining and naming the world's plants and animals. And his system is very much in use today, and not just in science. It is used in web design. So when the World Wide Web was invented, um, it was chaos. And to create order, um, web designers started to use something called the domain model, which is based on taxonomy and the principles of taxonomy. And then one day when I had to organize um, a website that had 1,100 websites under it, and I had to organize the content, that was the task, um, I sought out other experts. And one of those experts was a man named Mike Atlas, and he was at the BBC. And he, he actually hacked, he and his colleague Tom hacked, if you will, this taxonomy model that, that Linnaeus used in plants and animals um, to create a kind of system for the BBC's content. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's the way to go. And so I've kind of further hacked it to create a model for tourism and a easy to use system where you can strategize, create and manage your content more easily. Um, what I love about it is A, it's simple. It reduces your stress when you're like, what am I gonna talk about today on my channels? I don't have time for this. This is way too hard. I need to farm it out to someone who maybe doesn't care as much about my company. And that's always a fear for owners and entrepreneurs, right? Um, but it's basically a simple way to break down your content and your storytelling and simplify the publishing of your stories. And this is it. This is literally uh, how simple it is. So every, guiding everything always um, is your core story. And if anyone's ever talked to me about storytelling, you're going to hear me um, preach <laughs> the power of your core story and getting that piece right. And then underneath it are these uh, five elements and it's theme, topic, story, media, channel. 
So I'm going to talk about this for a little while and kind of unpack it, and we're going to work with it. So core story, um, I think we all know, we can probably feel it in our guts when I say even the title of that, what is your core story? And so for entrepreneurs, destinations, operators, what is the core story about your business? I think someone has is not muted, just um, FYI, we wanna make sure you're muted during the presentation so everyone can hear. Um, so core story, what is it? It's a North Star. It guides your decision-making about all of your content. It's the central emotional anchor of your storytelling. And most importantly, it makes a promise to your visitor about who you are and what you're offering. Um, so here's, uh, I love the example of a company called Nemo Bay. And um, does any, is anyone brave enough to read this out for me? Anyone want to volunteer? Don't be shy. I will. Who's, who's I? Oh, Tara. Hi, Tara. Okay. Read away, Tara. Okay. In 1980, Craig and Deborah Murray felt a call that few of us have heard before. It was coming from the Great Bear Rainforest on British Columbia's Wild West Coast. They felt they ha there had to be a simpler way of life, one with more opportunity for connection to what matters most. With a young family in tow, they set out to create a life spent immersed in nature, surrounded by ancient forests, natural ecosystems, clean air and water. The Murrays knew this was their chance to reconnect and coexist in harmony with the land. Awesome, thank you, Tara. Okay, so that's their grounding uh, core story. And on the left is their invitation to the visitor into their core story. This is on their website right now. And I wanna play their core story in video form, okay? Um, and I want you to just note what you observe that's maybe a little bit different about um, how they're telling it in video form. So, any observations? What was maybe a little bit different about that brand story? Any thoughts? Very quiet. Everything very quiet. was very calm and still. So you've got the senses from the sound as well as what you were seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were appealing to our senses, right? There was that sense of touch, the touch of the arm, uh, touch of that moss, right? There was, yeah, yeah, good point, Miriam. Anyone else? Uh, how about how it connected with that original core story and then their call to action into their story? Something that's powerful about this video and the approach that they took is they gave the Great Bear Rainforest they personified it and they let it shine and they stepped back and they just let 
the Great Bear Rainforest tell the story of its relationship with visitors. And that was what called them initially. And that's where in the video, you don't see audio overlay. You don't see graphics. You don't hear dialogue, right? Because they're saying, no, no, we're just going to step back and let the Great Bear Rainforest do to you what it did for us, right? So I, I, I find that's a strategic approach to how they're telling their particular um, core story. We had a so next we're going to talk. Oh, sorry. There were a couple of comments in the chat too. Somebody said, oh. Natalia said, everything in, is moving in slow motion. Colors aren't vibrant, gives you a sense of relaxation. And Joan mm -hmm. said, no words. Mm -hmm. Right, Joan, exactly. Yes, I tell you, thank you. Yeah, there's a real uh, poetic uh, tone to this video, right? It, it does, it welcomes us into the Great Bear Rainforest in a very unique way um, through a sensory uh, immersion. So yeah, a really, I think a really good job for what they're, what they're offering and their call to visitors into their story world, right? Um, so I want to chat a little bit about themes for a minute. This is sort of the next element. If you think of hierarchy, um, this is the next big one. So themes are, imagine them as just great big buckets in terms of your content, but themes are practical. So themes will prevent you from being all over the map. They will save you. <laughs> um, they're strategic. So they're going to guide where you're going to spend money and time, actually. Um, they're going to guide your uh, website focus as well, your website architecture. Uh, again, they're going to provide emotional anchors that are strategic, and they're going to make a promise to your visitor. Um, I, I was lucky enough to, uh, for some of you that might know Red Rock Adventure uh, Company, Mike Carpenter was has been in um, a few courses of mine, and I asked him for their brand video. And so he kindly gave it to me. But I want you in this video to see if you can spot the themes. And if you've got a piece of paper or or if you can just remember them, to pop them into chat as they come up. If you can you can spot them. I'd love to hear what you think. Our passion is sharing the Bay of Fundy and New Brunswick and our little area of St. Martin's with the world. We want to do that. We want to introduce people to all the cool places that we go to. Us going on a hike with a group of people, that's just us sharing our backyard. The reality is that we're dealing with the highest highs in the world. And yeah, there is a sense of adventure and there's a sense of risk. We need that as humans. That's the spice of life. We need to be challenged like that. Stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something new, it's a big piece of what we do is creating that safe environment for people to do that. We want to make sure it's the real Bay of Fundy experience. We want to make sure they're getting the true hospitality of the locals. We want them to taste the food, the fresh lobster coming out of the bay, the scallops, you know, the salmon. Like, that's the biggest part is we want to make sure they're getting what it is to live here. People are walking with a really beautiful memory and a piece of history that they've helped create. And, you know, that's a unique part about being an ambassador to the Bay of Fundy and being a wilderness guide. People don't come to us looking for a bad time. Everyone comes with a mood and an energy of like learning and adventure and exploring, and it makes us feel good. Adventure, travel trade, culinary, and outdoor education. Those four pillars make what Red Rock really is. Okay. So, Themes, did you spot them and what are they? Anyone want to take a stab? Okay, you're going to be shy. The themes are uh, adventure, culinary, outdoor education, and travel trade. And this is a screenshot, um, the bottom half of those photos is a screenshot taken directly from their website. If you look at their website, um, you'll see it is architected around the core story and then their themes. Um, they use the topic model brilliantly, actually. So Travel Trade has its own dedicated page, but here is for the visitor facing. These are their three, three themes. And then you see underneath it, um, you know, it's, it's the call to 
um, participate and learn. And then they've got all these stories within each of these verticals, each of these themes. So it really helps them define the visitor journey um, with their company. So I think they do a really great job there. But uh, topics are kind of where the real work lies and topics is the next element. This is where the hard work lies because you can't talk about every topic under the sun. And, you know, sorry to say it, it sounds like a terrible, terribly harsh phrase, but you have to murder your darlings is what it comes down to. <laughs> you know, we talk about editorial planning. It really happens in your decisions around your topics. Um, murder your darlings comes from apparently Truman Capote once said that, but it is about... Uh, really taking a hard look at, it might be something precious to you, but does it have value for the visitor? Um, what's it doing for the visitor journey? And you always have to come back to that. And thinking about also topics related to the goals for your experience, right? The goals for your audience, the goals for how many people you want to come to that experience, how many people you want to book for it, um, the type of person that you're wanting to attract, all of those decisions really happen um, very much connected to your topics and the type of topics you're choosing. So I want to just uh, show you kind of how this system works uh, as an example. And I found that Marriott Bonvoy also uses this system brilliantly. So at the top there are our themes. So themes of couples, family, culture, style. Pretty typical themes, not that creative, but, but still they're themes. So the couples and family themes, how um, this is an example of how they use this topic. Um, one of their topics under that theme of couples and family is romantic getaways. And one of their stories is where to get away with your bay in San Francisco. And so in their story, um, they do this beautiful job of segmenting their audiences within this topic. It's really brilliant. Um, they have the artsy couple, the sightseeing couple, um, they have the hipster couple, the outdoorsy couple. This is all in one story, the music loving couple, and they've chunked it out. And so they've really thought about these personas kind of and itineraries for each kind of couple. And then they've stacked it with all these things to do that have nothing to do with the Marriott. It's all links out to, you know, the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts or, you know, a local market. But it's telling through a story. It's providing an itinerary that's really rich and interesting. And then what do you think happens from that? Oh, no, sorry. And media, um, missed that piece. So media, uh, you would think they're media, it's, it's Marriott, right? It's super, um, you know, they have tons of money. They have a huge marketing budget. No, their media is very basic. This is an iStock photo, all their photos. I think they only have maybe one video and I'm not even sure it's theirs. Um, so when you're thinking about, oh God, I don't, I don't have a budget for this kind of thing. Their budget was strategy. That's where they invested their budget, budget was in uh, content strategy, not in their media. And look what happens. Uh, just type in, you know, romantic getaways, uh, West Coast, um, United States. I tried a whole bunch of search items, just kept bringing this up. So this is why this works. <laughs> you know, it's really about the, this is my mantra, um, and I hope it will become yours, but it's really about the right story at the right time for the right visitor. So I'm going to get you guys to practice a little bit. We're going to do, um, see if we can put these in order when we're looking at content and organizing content. And again, just to remind you, it goes theme, topic, story, media channel. Core story is your big umbrella. It's the big idea. Um, so let's strengthen, let's do some story workout here. Um, pretend you're the owner of a resort that's geared towards families. You have a gorgeous lakefront location and you've been around for 30 years and still going strong. You'd like to focus on your family canoe experiences this summer, but want to organize it in advance using the topic model. Okay. So here is a bunch of topics and themes and channels and media. And I want you to think about this of how you would order it using that topic model. And if you're brave, be brave, <laughs> put it in the chat. 
what is the order? So just list off um, the names of these squares in terms of the order and, and the numbers it would go in. So whether it's theme, topic, story, media, channel. Does that make sense to everybody? Am I seeing chats? Am I seeing chats? Not yeah. sure. One comment, not sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. We tried, you know, Nora and I tried to talk. We talked about doing this as a multiple choice, but it was too complicated. So what would be, what looks like a big bucket. Let me ask you this. Let's start with theme. Which one do you think would be a big kind of content bucket that you could organize under it? Family time. Yes. Okay. Right on. Oh, Miriam. Showing off. <laughs> okay. So our big bucket is family time, right? What's our topic? What's our topic? So a topic would be under family time, but you still wanna be able to tell stories, many stories under it. Two, yes. Anyone else think it's something else? Lake lessons, right, right? Cause you could talk about all kinds of lake lessons under that, couldn't you? And what is our story under that topic of lake lessons? Right, right, right. Yeah, four, canoe safety, right? And then I think, you know, video is kind of obvious for media. Um, and these are the answers. Okay. So great job, everybody. Like, that's exactly it. Uh, theme is family time. Topic is lake lessons. Story would be canoe safety. Uh, four would be, you know, we do a video about it and we'd post it as an Instagram post is our channel. So at first working with these seems kind of odd, but then as you get used to it and you practice it, you can just do it in like literally just seconds. You can do it in your sleep, which is where you want to get to. Um, but, you know, just as a reminder, topics, you can see how topics are really connected to experiences. So if I were that resort, um, these four topics, high seas and done, check. You know, this, this could do me for the whole season. Um, so, yeah. The visitor, though, you know, has a lot of choice. And when we think about using this model, um, you, you, it won't be useful to you unless you map it out in advance. And once you've kind of gone through a year of using this and you've kind of gotten the hang of it, you will be so much further ahead for your next high season. Um, there's still lots of time, obviously, for this summer, but it does provide for the visitor, as we noticed with the Marriott, it does provide them the right content at the right time in the visitor journey. So I want to talk a little bit about you know, planning, because if you're not using a calendar now to do your planning, it's a good time to consider it because seasonal planning is, would be where I start, right? So you want to kind of look in tourism, we kind of want to look at a season. So lots of people have different dates for these seasons, for shoulder season, for low season, for high season, but they generally fall um, pretty predictively in across the calendar year. But in a seasonal planning in advance, you could start planning right now, absolutely for your fall and for your winter, your low season, right? Uh, and you would think about your core story. How's it showing up? How's it showing up? How are we bringing it to your life, bringing it to life this season? What is gonna be our priority audience at that time? What are our priority experiences at that time? And then you would be thinking about, you know, gosh, what is the new content we're gonna be creating and what's maintenance content? What's evergreen content that we already have? And if you're thinking, well, I don't have any evergreen content. Well, 
this is where creating it in advance is going to save you. So that quintessential picture, if I'm, I'm that resort, the quintessential picture of a sunset with a family at the end of the dock fishing, that's my evergreen content. It's never going to go out of style. I've been doing this for 30 years. That goes into evergreen folder uh, for end of summer. Thanks everybody for coming out. It was a great high season, right? So that's an example of evergreen versus new content. New content needs more planning and thinking in, in advance. So for those of you that might be having new staff come on board, you know, okay, is how are they going to be involved in creating that content? How are we going to be capturing content this summer? That's the real time media piece um, that creates your living narrative, right? And then what are you going to be your high profile? What are going to be the big high profile pieces? You're going to have a couple of them in a season. So some of you I know, I've talked to in this class, are considering maybe doing a brand video. That's a big ticket item, right? So that's something obviously you're going to plan ahead. You're going to apply for grants and, and get yourself in order, right? And then you're also going to go, okay, what's the plan for promotion for that? So that might take up a whole season um, of that happening. So if you look at it, the next kind of tier down when I'm thinking about planning is, um, you know, what topics make sense. So feel free to just share with me right now or share in the chat. What are some topics that you guys are thinking about for the summer right now? Like, what do you, what do you, what is going around in your minds in terms of some topics that you're focused on that are related to experiences? I'd love to hear in the chat and share because this is how we learn um, together as a class. So if you want to just pop that in the chat as we're talking and just share with others, like what are some topics and experiences that you are building out right now? And then at the month level, you really, this is where you really want to think about where are the visitors in their journey right now? So right now we're looking at April needing right now to book and to plan for summer. Maybe they've already booked. Maybe they're into the next part of their journey where they're really getting into the details of planning. Um, someone answering in chat. Opening the full, okay, so Nancy, hi, Nancy. Um, opening the full Fundy Chill Parkway with its connector roads. Yeah, huge, right? So that's going to require a lot of strategic thinking about that because that is a major announcement. It's a major thing to happen. And it has everything to do with how you're going to plan that visitor journey and welcome people into the parkway, right? Good, good one. Anyone else feel free to share um, in the chat what you're thinking about for this summer, what your focus is. And this is also at the month level in your planning, you're going to think about for those of you that are going to spend a little money, right? Maybe, uh, and I talk a lot about operators who are just using, you know, Facebook ad spend for the first time. They're just thinking about it because they really want to reach a particular local market, which is, it's so fantastic for that. Um, so this is where you have a bit of a, a plan around that. The other plan at the month level, you're going to start to note in your, um, calendar is to reach out to local media to get, you know, maybe there's an influencer that wants to come out and experience what you have to offer. Um, maybe it's just let doing a basic kind of press release to local media to let them know about your huge festival that you're going to be doing end of July. So it's like, how long do they need to know in advance? That's going to be in your month kind of level. And then obviously key, your key events are going to be at the month um, view and then um, you get into your weekly planning and this is really where uh, the pedal hits the metal if you will and if I was that resort you know I would be looking at my topic my stories and my media and channel so this might be and this is a very intense week, I've got to say, um, and not everybody can do <laughs> can do this much media in a week. But, you know, Monday, I might focus on that new safety tips and I might do a blog with a call to action for lesson sign up, you know, come in. We offer free lessons when you stay for four nights or more sign up here. So you're saying sign up for lessons, but you're really saying come and stay with us for four nights. Right. Um Tuesday, forest walk and forage. So we do a lot of this at the resort. And what I might offer, and this is the piece I'm always going to um, circle back to, is the visitor experience, the digital visitor experience. Don't just wait for the visitor to arrive. 
give them a part of who you are now. Give them, let them experience your core story now. So I would give them my grandma's wild berry um, dessert recipe, actually. And I might just do a fun little, you know, Instagram reel. I do a Facebook post with the, with the dessert and say, oh, by the way, on Sundays, we have a new um, homemade dessert after dinner and the kids get to eat it on the dock or something, you know. Um, Wednesday, uh, canoe fishing, because that's the focus, right? That's the focus this summer. And I might do something like parts of a fish explained. So I'm kind of sharing my knowledge. I know what I'm doing after 30 years. I kind of know, hope I know. Uh, I might talk about the particular trout in my lake that's special and unique to where we live. Um, and I would just probably do a YouTube video for that one. Thursday, how to portage. So let's pretend that the portage experience, my portage experience is a 10 dayer. It's like five grand. It's super expensive. Well, maybe not. It's I offer a lot of value as a resort, but it's it's really kind of the big one this summer that I want uh, families to come out to. And, you know, they get a big cabin, it's all waterfront, an amazing experience. But I'm not saying come, come and, um, you know, my call to action isn't going to be book this, book this, book this. It's going to be the dimensions of things they're going to learn. And so one of them is how to portage with kids so you can do it on your own you know, eventually. Portaging isn't easy, but we do it in this 10-day experience. So I would start talking about it. I would start talking about it in their dreaming and consideration stage in the visitor journey. Um, and I would do, I would really go to town. I would get my family to run down the beach, well not run, I would get my family to go down the beach holding a canoe above them, you know. Maybe I would put some obstacles in their way, um, you know, what do you do? Where do you put the canoe down when there's a huge tree in your way on on uh, on a trail? Um, and I would I would invest some time into this because why? I'm going to offer this experience. I hope for many years to come. So you're going to create that content once, and you may be able to reuse it, maybe freshen it up with dates and that kind of thing next year. But thinking about our content as investments into your business. Just like you make investments into a new stove, you make investments into your content. So that, that would be my big investment piece when we think about that weekly plan. Um, and then Friday, I might do just a fun, you know, series of uh, photos of different canoe types. Did you know there's different canoe types? Well, we have lots of different canoes um, at our resort because canoeing is our focus and our, our main topic. Um, and we're really good at doing, you know, um, all kinds of different types of canoe. So that is just an example of how, what my weekly content plan might look like. Um, I'm going to say as this resort being a business for 30 years um, that I have help. I'm not doing this all by myself. And my help are my uh, 16 and 18 year old uh, folks that are coming out to work for me this summer. I'm handing it over. They are creating all the reels. They're, they have a camera. It's part of their job. And, um, and they're trained. And I'm going to hand them uh, my core story. I'm going to hand them a guide. And I'm going to say, hey, these are themes. This is what we're focused on. This is what I want you to capture. And they're going to they're gonna be directed by me because I'm going to be the keeper of the big idea. Um, so... You're thinking, some of you might be thinking, are you kidding me? I can't create all that content in one week, Megs. I'm telling you, you can do so much of it in advance. I'm telling you, you can. You want to create predictable, repeatable content types or you're going to lose your mind. <laughs> um, so one of the things I always recommend uh, to do is to create series. You know, serial content will save you. There is serial content. Oh gosh, there's series, you know, I think of this one Four Seasons Hotel in Vancouver, they've been doing um, a profile on their staff every Friday, I think since like 2008. Um, so really serial content is okay. It's repeated content um, and you can do it weekly. You could do it bi-weekly, you can do it monthly. But what's great about it is you don't have to really think about it. You've already figured it out on the calendar, you scheduled it, it's ready to go. And it's just one less day you kind of have to think of creative new content. Um, 
Visitor generated content. Uh, I can't stress this enough. Everybody that knows me knows I am super passionate about letting your visitors shine. So have a, at least every week, at least every week. Um, and you know what? There is wonderful content by your local DMO or your RGO um, tourism folks that are experts in creating media for your region, your destination, um, lean on them, you know, regram <laughs> their beautiful sunset picture. Uh, even that, because if they've captured some visitor generated content, right, I should be clear about that. Take their visitor generated content and repost it. Um, I think it's okay as long as you let the person know, but what I would prefer you to do is to look to your own visitors um, and really Give them lots of opportunity to talk about you. Make sure they know a hashtag to share. Give them ideas and places and story hotspots. And those of you that were in the last webinar, we talked about story hotspots and knowing where those are. Um, and having make sure, making sure the whole staff uh, it encourages it as well. So visitor generated content every single week, share it. Um, education. So education is just blown through the roof as far as a type of content um, since the pandemic, and it's not going away anytime soon. So the reason I say education is because you're experts. You're all experts in what you do. And I'd love to see more of that actually with tourism operators, because I think maybe, I don't know if you're shy or, or what it is, but you know so much. And um, I think that's a really interesting way to call people and invite people to engage with your content and your story. Sensory storytelling. Well, we saw that right in the Great Bear Rainforest and how that was brought alive for us. Sensory storytelling is a nice kind of pause. And we talked about how that made us feel when we saw that video. It could be as simple as, you know, um, I'm thinking of you, Lady Smith Manor, it could be as simple as a tiny short reel of someone sipping, you know, the froth off the top of a beer in your new pub, right? So it's just a moment. It just, it's like a beat in your story. I talk about story beats. It is a micro moment. It's a part of your bigger core core story, but it gives us a sensory um, insight into the experience that we might have with you. So that, I think, just build that into your plan. Um, and then you want to do your, you know, typical seasonal planning, um, holidays, have that mapped out well in advance. Don't wait for the day, uh, whether it's, you know, Christmas, Valentine's, whatever it might be. But also keep in mind, is, are there unique um, special days, national cat day, whatever that might be, that kind of line up with you. So it might be a national um, water sports day. If I am the canoe resort, man, I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate that. I'm going to hashtag it. I'm going to join the community and talk about it. So any questions about this at this point? I haven't lost anybody. I know it's, I know it's tricky. Um, but here's where I want you to think about the visitor you're talking to, because you'd be surprised if I started asking all of you to describe your audiences in detail. What do they look like? What do they wear? What do they drive? How are they getting there? Where are they in their visitor journey? You might have some gaps. But the other gap is, especially for those of you who are bringing on new staff right now, is do they know who your visitor is? Um, and being explicitly clear in that little guide that you're you're giving out to everybody or that you're creating about your core story is this is who we're talking to this is who we want to be talking to and this is how we serve them with our content right um because you want the visitor like we saw with marriott bonvoy right you want them to meet your content when they're searching for you and the way to do that is through knowing who you're talking to um, truly, it does work. But if you are kind of just, uh, you know, throwing a noodle at the wall, you're probably not going to connect with the, the visitor that's looking for what you're offering, right? Uh, I'm just going to play this uh, short little video about, you know, visitor stories, user stories, and why we need them. How can user stories help us share responsibility for content? 
when you're sitting down and you're writing something and, and it's a brand new story, um, humans make things up in their own minds, don't they? Right? If it's not concrete, <laughs> if it's not right in front of you and you don't explicitly say something, the person that you're talking to will be bringing all their behaviour with them, all their background, all their experiences, everything with them. If you don't make something explicit, they can just make it up, not in a malicious way. And so you are halfway down the story, you are halfway down a content path, and then you get to the end going, Ooh, that's not what I thought it was going to look like. And then you end up with conflict. So when you're using a user story, you make it very explicit from day one, from minute one. And then everybody, and I've done this recently in an organization where every team, so the news team, the press team, everybody runs off the same user story. So that you are giving a coherent message and a kind of consistent message across the board. It's the one kind of crux that everybody can hang off. And that's because it's explicit and it's written down. How can... Yeah, so it's explicit and written down. Uh, so I challenge you, you know, when you're welcoming new staff or even for yourself, even for your, if you're a solopreneur, um, to write it down, you know, be specific about the visitor you're serving. Uh, I just was talking to an operator this week who, you know, is, is, is concerned about all of the young staff. Um, you know, she happens to own a lakefront resort and she is concerned about giving over the reins, you know, what are they going to do? And recently she actually sent a family member out, um, to take a video and they came back and they hadn't put the resort in the background of the video. And so it was like, what are you doing? Why uh, the visitor needs to see the background needs to see the resort, you know, so they weren't lined up on that content capture and then it's a waste of everyone's time and it's something you can't use so that's something you really want to avoid um th speaking of team uh a lot of you work with vendors you work with freelancers you work with uh staff you work with all kinds of partners and collaborators in creating your content right we we typically can't do it alone you really do need humans to create or curate it and, you know, whether you're um, a solopreneur, whether you're an organization, a team of five or a team of three, these are kind of the roles um, that you have to think about in terms of both being responsible for and delegating. So managing editor, that role is really the keeper of the big idea. Um, the lead editor, that's the boss of content. These two people might be the same. They might not. Um, content manager, Who's managing the content? Who's doing the quality control, right? Making sure that that young staff member who is now taking over the Instagram page really understands um, what's appropriate, what isn't, what is a story, what isn't. Then there's a content creator. And I think this should always be a bit of a shared um, piece in your business. So the person always has a camera. They are empowered to create content. Maybe they'll miss the mark sometimes, but you know, if you've given them a guide and given them some guardrails, hopefully they are a powerful uh, part of your content strategy. So content creator, very important. And remember your visitor is a content creator. Consider visitors absolutely great. Maybe your best content creators. Um, story spotter. So this is a role, absolutely a role that everybody can play. Where are you seeing stories unfold? And we talked about in the last webinar, if you were with me, about the importance of real-time media and establishing trust um, with your audience in, in this day and age. It's just totally essential. So Story Spotter is, is a role that you can kind of consider who's going to be doing that, who's wearing that hat. And um, it kind of should be everybody. So um, some of you, might have heard this term, uh, you know, funnel, a customer funnel. So we're always funneling customers to this moment when they're converting. You might use, you might have heard that language. Yes, just nod your head. Um, yeah, I've heard it for a long time, like from the 80s, right? But I feel like coming out of the pandemic and everything we've experienced that our relationship with our visitor is changing and has changed. Um, I consider it more of a circle, an iterative circle. So at the heart of your content is your visitor experience. And circling that is both your offline and online content that you're creating. And they're totally entwined. Then you have your content design, distribution, content creation, your measurement, 
your conversation and your listening. These are all the elements of your content strategy, but absolutely the, the heart of it is your visitor experience. And um, I don't know if it's a funnel that we're kind of herding sheep into a farm <laughs> anymore as it is an iterative, regenerative relationship um, that has a more circuitous, um, you know, feel to it, I think is, is a little less aggressive. Um, now, obviously there's a lot of tools. There's thousands of tools. There, there's no webinar long enough for me to tell you about all the tools. So I'm going to really ask you and encourage you in the chat um, to share tools that are working for you or not working for you. Tips, tricks, anything that you can share with the class. Let's make this a bit of a hive mind this morning. Don't be shy. Um, one tool, if you haven't heard about it, that I happen to love is called Answer the Public. There's a free and paid version, just like everything. Um, but it's, it's really fantastic because you can put in any search term and you get all the questions that people are asking about this particular term. And it's, it's actually quite beautiful the way that they present it, um, but super helpful. So I just, pop, I just popped in uh, Grossmorn Park. Look at all those questions that people are asking about Grossmorn Park, right? This alone is content for a year. This is content for a year for me or longer. <laughs> So it's a great tool if you're stuck, if you're wondering what the heck to talk about, um, it gets you going. And it also provides a direct view into what people are asking. You know, there's 3 billion Google searches every day, 3 billion, and 20% of those have never been seen before. So it's, yeah, it's like a direct line to your customer's thoughts. Very cool, very cool tool. And by the way, if there's other SEO search type tools, please pop them in the chat for everybody. Um, there's lots of tools to manage and monitor your content. There's thousands of them. These are some simple tools I found useful. Hootsuite and TweetDeck. If you're a big Twitter user, TweetDeck's great. It's also just great for monitoring. So if you've got particular hashtags you're wanting to keep an eye on and you should be keeping an eye on because that's where you're going to find your visitor generated content and visitor questions. They're great. Um, Trello boards. I love Trello boards for the topic model because you can literally have a board for your core content, your theme, your topic, your story. Really handy. Buffer, great overall social media monitoring, managing um, channel. Same with mention. Google alerts. Set up some Google alerts. Those are dead simple. Um, if you haven't used the advanced search on Twitter, oh my gosh, it's so great. You can literally um, find out the conversation on Twitter about any topic under the sun. And um, that can sometimes be very enlightening. Uh, I use Google Docs all the time. If anyone's interested, I've got a really basic Google Doc um, content plan. Really, really basic, I can share with you. But um, just so you know, if you stay to the end of this webinar, which is almost done, um, I've, I've actually created a really great handout for everybody uh, to use to work through systematically, work through and apply um, the topic model. So hang in there. Content creation, lots on that front. Some ones that I love for photography, I use Unsplash all the time. Other people prefer Pixabay. Um, I stock, you know, if you, you really are desperate and you need, um, you know, to pay a few bucks, I stock is great to have some credits there. Um, video and audio, Pond5 is super handy for video and audio. Shutterstock, Storyblocks, super handy for video. Um, YouTube Audio Library, it's fantastic if you haven't used it. There's tons of sound effects um, and soundtracks for free in there. And then um, to create on your phone, which is handy, you know, especially for staff who might be creating, I have Adobe, pardon me, Adobe Express and uh, iMovie, but there is a ton, a ton of apps uh, for your iPhone and for, well, any mobile phone these days. So please share those in the, the chat if you've got a great app that you use to create uh, video or edit photography. Um, graphic design, two great ones everybody kind of uses. I think a lot of people use Canva. Uh, Adobe Express is fantastic. I use Adobe Express writing. So 
some of you might not be strong writers. Um, uh, don't be shy to use Grammarly. It's an AI uh, oriented um, platform, but it's super handy. You can plug it in and it basically uh, says, it wags its finger at you all day um, for your content creation. So when you're writing, whether it's on the web, whether it's a email, newsletter, story, it just flags um, common errors you might miss if you're rushing to a deadline or if you're just writing content for social, write it in a Word doc first and just catch your mistakes before you publish them. Hemingway Editor, if anybody's used that before. Oh, oh, it's really good for long writers like me. Those of you who write long sentences, um, the Hemingway Editor keeps it short. And why the Hemingway Editor is good is it's great for social. Okay, so enough said. Um, simple's often best. So, I once worked with 110 visitor centers here in BC, moving them from rack cards into the digital world. It was a massive project. They just couldn't get staff on board. It was super challenging. So um, we put up in the busiest visitor center at the Vancouver airport, I put up a giant whiteboard. We had a pen hanging down and a calendar. And that is what worked. That is what worked. So sometimes sticky notes, colored pens in your main office, folks are coming in to work. Let them write ideas, you know, make it a collaborative fun thing. So just as just as a kind of final recommendation. And then back to the idea of a building and the structure and the strategy and the plans. I would suggest to you of thinking about your own building and the topic model helping you to plan your content so visitors will find you and your core story really being uh, the foundation of everything. So your themes and your topics and your stories and your media and your channel. And um, yeah, I, I really wish you luck. Um, that's, that's it for me, Nora, and we are just over time, but everybody is going to get this handout from Nora. Um, and yeah. Thank you all for coming out today. I really appreciate it.